Oh, my machine is frozen. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure Meeting. I'm currently trying to open the correct windows on my, on my machine. Uh, we are the 4th of October 2022. Today we have uh, Mark Waits, Stefan Merle, Daniel Beck, uh, Hervé Lemeur, Kevin Martins, and I, Damien Duportal. Okay, the notes are being started. Ah, I'm having issues today. Sorry, I'm a bit jet lagged, so I might not be able to carefully do things. Okay, now I'm having a real issue. <clears throat> okay, let's get started with the weekly release. So it's in progress, right? As I can see. Yes. So the, the tag has been placed, the change log is has been merged. So it's it's proceeding, no known failures yet. Cool. Um announcements. So the DevOps world and the contributor summit did not happen uh, because uh Yuri can uh, try to go to that conference. Um, so yeah, happy that no one uh, was hurt and everyone is safe. So that's the good news, uh, which means that we have a few tasks that uh, had been delayed, especially uh, discussing and working on the election process uh, on the uh, artifactory system, even though Hervé did quite a great job on some of these areas. Uh, and the Twitter account uh, recovery, because Kosuke uh, never fl fly to the conference. It was canceled before, so we weren't able to exchange on the way. Um, another announcement, I've rotated all my keys, but I mention it now. Um, I had a security issue on my hotel room, so my um, laptop wasn't touched. Uh, my security key uh, were with me, so it was missing a second factor. I checked the boot, it was shut down and no one uh, rebooted it. I saw no access on either the GitHub logs in a commit and push, even read access, and I never saw any access on the SSH to our machines. So uh, on the AWS account, Azure, uh, I've checked both, they were untouched and no CloudBees account on the CloudBees uh, account that I used. So, that should be okay, but as a matter of safety, I still rotated my SSH key, all my passwords uh, on any account related to Jenkins. So now, uh, uh, if you think about something I should have rotated, don't hesitate because with the stress of the travel, losing my things and being a bit ill, I might have forgotten something. So I used my, uh, I got a cheat sheet for such uh, events, but still, if you think about something, don't hesitate. Do you have other announcements, folks? So I'm on the DevOps world topic. I'm, I've am i started a think document about how we approach the Contributor Summit. I haven't shared it with anybody yet. I, it's going to have to be online. I think we need it, but I don't think we should attempt an all-day event. Uh, online things tend to work better if we do one or two-hour segments. Uh, I'll start that document, share it around, and invite people to comment, and then I'll share it more widely in the community once I've once I've gotten alignment with a, a relatively smaller group of people first. So I um, think we need the summit. It's it's a great help. We've got lots of topics, and then we got to decide which topics go where, etc. Okay, makes sense. Um, okay, other announcements? Nope, okay, so we can just check the calendar. So next weekly will is able to happen. I need help for the calendar. I'm not uh, thinking clear enough. Next October 11, weekly. I'll put it in, Damien. Okay, cool. Next LTS is tomorrow, right? That is correct. 
So that means we should restrain from merging anything from now until the LTS is finished. Uh, let me think because what issues did we add during the last security issues for the LTS? Were there some, yeah, that will be worth it to double check after the meeting uh, if there are things to be um, backported because last time we had issues uh, at least on the Docker images, minor issues not blocking the release process, but still annoying for the end users. Uh, we need to just check because I remember some things were to be discussed. I think it's related to the GDK 8 being overridden. Okay. So, so that sounds like that should probably be part of our weekly checklist for today that we, we look into those things. Uh, yes. Maybe you can send them to me or, or drop me suggestions. I know that the LTS uh, packaging was being reviewed carefully by, um, so Chris Stern, the release lead, proposed a pull request. Alex Brandes looked at it and Basil Crow looked at it. So okay. I think we're I think we're in well, place yes, there. Sir. However, it's it's a very healthy thing to use the weekly to be sure we check it. So yep. I, I like that idea. <clears throat> but there are things that cannot be checked during the weekly, uh, uh, especially the missing backports from the master branch to the stable branch. Mm, okay. Um, I, what I will do is that after that meeting, I'm saying it aloud so it's shared in terms of knowledge. We'll compare on the Jenkins infra slash release. That, that's where my concern is. Jenkins infra slash release, the release script themselves, and the Jenkins CI slash Docker official image. So for both, I will compare uh, the uh, the master branch with the stable LTS branch and do a, a thoughtful uh, review of each item if it's uh, if it can have an impact or not. I'm mainly thinking about the Docker image used for making the release itself, which is updated quite often, but that can have issues, especially if we have diverging uh, LTS uh, GDKs, if we have a patch change or something. Uh, last time I remember the issue was that we accidentally, we had an, um, a more recent version, but that opened the C group version to support for container image, but that created uh, bugs that, uh, we were lucky to have uh, Basil and Jesse at least who cooked the issue uh, quite uh, early. So they were able to push out fixes on, on the plugins, impacted plugins with that version. But that might be one of the impacts. We need to be careful on that. And no official security release. Uh, and next major event for them maybe. So it's in a few months, so we have some time. Yeah, that's February 2023. Is it March? I forget yeah. which. February, yeah. correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a word on, unless you have something else to add on the announcement and upcoming. Okay, so a word about the tasks that were uh, done or closed uh, last week. Um, we had a few issues related to a uh, uh, let's say a repository permission updater, which weren't really issues. Uh, so I saw that team open, uh, he had an issue with expired credential, which is weird. But uh, the, really, the repository permission updater, we checked it at least once a day, uh, was suffering no issue, no fail build, so it was working as expected. Um, and it's monitored. So uh, I don't remember exactly what was the root issue that Tim detected. So he closed it. Ah, okay. So he had a, a failure in the upload to uh, the repo on his plugin. And so that's why a rep the Maven repo said, oh no, you are, an, you are not allowed to push the release because it was partially released. Uh, release are not that important in, with that setup. So we had to increment the number and do a new release. So no issue in our case uh, this time. Uh, some login resets, some uh, uh, some people answer, some not. Thanks uh, Hervé and uh, Mark for taking care of that. 
Same for the multiple commit permission. Most of the time people ask for a permission and then they are redirected to repository permission update or documentation where they update, uh, open a pull request, which is a separate topic. That shows that the help desk uh, is really uh, nice and true point or easy because uh, uh, people uh, have are opening issues on that one. Uh, let me try to remember. Some issue I don't know. Uh, great work, uh, Hervé and uh, Adrien and the alt, uh, the plugin ill scoring, which is now deployed in production, uh, ready to roll. So now it's being updated constantly. Um, acceptance test harness, it was already done before the DevOps world two weeks ago, but it has been confirmed that everything is set up and went because they published a new tag and the image was pushed. Uh, and I know that Alex Brandes was annoyed by the uh, failing linting of the Docker file when he tried to change the operating system of that image, which shows that it's working because uh, that's a, a nice negative test. He was breaking things and it was blocking his pull request. So work very well. Um, thanks, team, for the, all the archiving. And finally, core release staging not working anymore. Yes. So Daniel. Um, I'm not sure. Yes. Are you okay with Basil analysis about the fact that with the all the Maven plugin changes, not the one I proposed, but all the other that you and Basil at least worked on, now the staging should looks good, right? Or it should be solved. I don't know if we were, oh, we could test it in real life. I think his analysis makes sense. Um, I have come to the same conclusion when I read the log and which commands we're using that we're always staging and always staging to a custom repo. It's just that sometimes the custom repo is also the default repo, same URL. And so uh, Basil pointing out, it says using custom, using alternate deployment repository um is what con what i think uh we wanted to see so this seems resolved cool okay so that was that was also my understanding but i have less knowledge than you and basil on that area so i just wanted a triple check thanks daniel that's quite clear um, so uh, yep. comment to another issue that I just saw, the anti-spam system was triggered, the first done entry. Um, so uh, the response the reporter got was that there is no user registered with that email, but the anti-spam system would prevent user registration. So that's sort of kind of expected, no? Yes, yes, I miss my my uh, question wasn't really as you said. Uh, yes, uh, neither should not have existed. Um, I checked uh, the blacklist in the app, and I didn't see any relationships between uh, uh, this person name or surname and uh, domain with the blacklist. So I don't see immediately why uh, it has been triggered have we have we deployed the changes to the deny list that i opened the pull request for about a month uh, or two ago if it has been merged yeah it has been uh, yeah. really uh, really yes yes okay. it was uh, deployed um i don't remember something to be checked uh rv uh, do you mind trying to check on the logs I don't. I don't know by uh, like so this. When, when someone uh, hits the spam check, an email is sent to a private mailing list. I think it's called account admin or something. Yes, uh, about this about this email, I would I just wanted to change it to our private infra team one with eventually a redirection, an automatic redirection forwarding to the original email address. What do you think about it? Because I don't have any visibility on this email address. I'm not sure right. what I mean. So, uh, yeah. um, I mean, as long as it's a private list, I don't particularly care. The thing is, so, uh, correction. This is a very high volume list. So, 
I would suggest to not send the emails to a regular list. Like this is just an archive that you occasionally need to search. So I would leave it as a separate list and you just never get emails for it. In your subscription settings, you say you don't want emails and whenever someone hits the help desk, you just browse there in the interface or something. That would be my suggestion. Okay. In the case of this person, they hit the IP blacklist. So okay. uh, nothing about their name or email address, but an IP that 10 years ago, a spammer probably used or something. Okay. I forgot about the IP address. Yeah, we will reopen it, but what we can, can we unblacklist this IP address? Um, we can probably just clear out the list of IP addresses. I don't know. Um, that might be something to check, you know, spend half an hour or so to look at recent uh, blocked account signups, whether the IP block list is doing anything that looks useful uh, because we have so many IP addresses blocked and... This should be a, a time sensitive data. It should be blocked for, for mm -hmm. a time being, not forever. Yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah. Something like hold sec could, should, could be uh, eventually implemented instead of uh, a static uh, IP list, IP address list. I know this link I've put in the chat uh, Allows to have uh, its um, um, crowd in uh, an open source collaborative uh, uh, blacklist. I don't know if it would be useful or not. I mean, sorry, I was busy looking at the IP address. So no we're problem. we're we're blocking an entire slash sixteen here. So okay. that's that's bound to yeah. hit some folks uh, that uh, are innocent um regarding any other integrations um is it worth spending time on the account app so what's what's the situation with uh the other system? we didn't we didn't progress on kick look or anything uh, since uh, yeah. far a long time the, the, the main issue point. is that we need we are constrained by an infrastructure network issue is that that application should run on a private network which is not today so that's why we are not moving it key cloud was going on that direction but we have infrastructure issue and then it requires time and right now our time has been hidden by the uh, by um, gfrog stuff makes sense yeah so i think uh, in the short term we can probably do without the block list uh until we see actual spammer uh activity again uh, some of the block list entries have um, explanations, like comments pointing to IP scans that look like a spammer, but uh, I don't know how useful they are like five to ten years later. Yeah. Cool, thanks for the explanations. More info on that topic. Okay, so then let's proceed to the currently opened issues that we are working on. So as a reminder for each issue, the question is, um, what is the status? Are we going to work on the next week uh, until the next uh, weekly, which happened next week? Um, do we have time or uh, has it lowered in priority? So first one is about Jenkins release Twitter account. So we were planning to ask Kosuke uh, to do a two or three person key rotation so we could access the DLVR account. We currently have access to the Twitter account. Uh, the question was that we need the DLVR account to see why the automation is failing since weeks. Um, that's the status. Uh, Hervé came with a proposal that was let's uh, remove DLVR uh, uh yeah. token and integration and we can rebuild a new automation 
as a reminder, the goal of that Twitter account is to have, is only to tweet about new plugin updates, where the source of truth is the RSS feed from Jenkins IO, if I'm not mistaken, or plugin Jenkins IO. So any anyone who uh, will want to help, we need to add a new automation that does this, basically. Yeah. Um, also, the Twitter together uh, action has uh, significantly been updated this last time, and it's now uh, it seems now really compelling. I think uh, automation for this account and eventually the Jenkins official account could be really great. You can uh, check the tweets, you can do polls, you can add media, you can do a lot of things, and it will allow to have a review on a repository uh, with a different team reviewing it and uh, validating it and scheduling it for the wanted time or anything. So, yeah, that could so be that, a good uh, entry point to, to see how it works. And... So re regarding the official Jenkins account, I think that's worth uh, going to one of the advocacy SIG and or at least sending them an email and work with them on that area because that's an account yes. we don't have access to. Uh, regarding the Jenkins, yep. Yeah, I know Gavin uh, was uh, really interesting, interested to use this uh, particular uh, repo and it cool. was a little bit in standby because it has some problems, but they have now been resolved. One of the Matt uh, Kowe from Digital Ocean uh, really uh, um, uh, became a maintainer and push uh, great updates recently. Okay, cool. So Hervé, is it okay if, uh, so uh, are you able to continue on that topic and explore the new automation? Because right now it's still an issue because since the 8th of August, we didn't add any tweet on that account, which we yeah, have account. I just need to check how the RSS field, um, RSS, uh, this was uh, transformed as tweets, but yeah. Okay. So should I uh, add you, assign you there? Yeah, no problem. We can delay or it's mm. it's only a question, uh, will you have time to work on it given? Uh, okay. Um, I, haven't, I haven't created a new milestone yet, so I will take care of that I'll, after the meeting. So. I'll create it. Uh, uh, next topic is still for you, Hervé. Uh, status of the artifact caching proxy for CI Jenkins IO. Yes, uh, so can you give us a quick status? In last week, uh, I have uh, create, successfully created the AKS public uh, cluster uh, dedicated to, for now, this uh, artifact caching proxy. As soon as uh, I have some, I'm currently uh, working on the network load balancing uh, integration. And uh, as soon as it's working, I'll be able to to create a pull request on the dozen or so plugins where we will uh, test uh, this functionality with uh, all provider uh, available on Azure, Digital Ocean, on uh, AWS. Okay, so as a reminder for everyone, uh, one of the reasons why while it's taking time, it's because we're hosting it on, uh, on Kubernetes clusters, but for Digital Ocean and uh, Amazon, EKS, um, we have that issue that the freight model of the uh, container agent from CI Jenkins IO are expected to run on a um, cluster, Kubernetes cluster, which is only targeted at doing that. So adding a service with load balancer exposed publicly is not part of the equation. That's why we have to create separated cluster. The overhead cost in terms of infrastructure is low because we don't pay a lot for another cluster. Uh, but the issue is that we need this cluster in the same network area, but in the same network region, but not the same networks. So that took us a, a bit of time to create a new infrastructure. The good thing is that now we are able to manage way more clusters, which is a good thing in terms of reliability and validating our processes. So I assume that we will continue working on that because that's our top priority. 
Next topic, unless any question. So publish pipeline step docs generator and backend extension indexer. So these two, these two repositories um, generate static files um, that are then used for generating the Jenkins.io website. The issue is that these files are generated inside CI Jenkins.io in the form of uh, when the build is on the main branch, if it's success, then it archives the artifact. And since it's public access uh, files, then the generator for Jenkins.io downloads this file from CI Jenkins.io. That creates a lot of problems and adherences, mainly on with the security release process, because it requires CI Jenkins.io to be always up and available. So the goal of that issue is to ensure that uh, these things are built somewhere else and uh, pushed on the public reports Jenkins IU website alongside with all the other reports. So we started working on migrating these jobs uh, inside uh, infra.ci, the private controller, enabled with a build log on the GitHub access. So the build log and not the deployment log, but the build log is available to contributors. And now it's a matter of ensuring that we have the same feature set between CI Jenkins.io and Infra CI. That's a problem we never had until today, but we have it now. The problem was between CI Jenkins.io and Release and Trusted until today. Uh, reason is we need the same tools with the same name and the same uh, inside Jenkins and the same label also. So it's not complicated, it's just we have to carefully review and it's a back and forth of trying the, the pull request. But almost there, and once it's done, the reports will be published, so we will be able to open a pull request to Jenkins IO. So instead of downloading the static file from CIG, it will download them from the public website reports Jenkins IO. The reason on that is also because we don't want any private credential on CI Jenkins IO. It's considered a public instance. So relying on it can be dangerous in terms of either quality of service, resiliency, and security concerns. So I will keep continuing uh, working on this one unless there is a strong opposition or any question. Okay, next task. Finish cleanup of mirror brain. I worked uh, on it two weeks ago. So um, that one has a potential of great mayhem, uh, especially on the plugin and release. So I was waiting for the LTS to be done, so tomorrow, and then I will uh, work on that part. Uh, the main goal is to ensure that we don't have any leftover from mirror brain, but the investigation showed that that user was manually managed on the virtual machine for four, four almost five years. So there were some hidden cron tab, which are quite important because they run every hour to synchronize all the latest plugin updates to the mirrors, which can be quite useful, right? So the goal is to create a separated new account with a dedicated name, which is not mirror brain and try to put everywhere. So the goal will be first step, create that account. And then we will start to moving the permissions, scripts, and tasks to that new account and see if it breaks. So the goal is to have at least one change per day when it will be ready. And in any case, we can roll back to the current mirror brain. And then after one full week of this taking care of synchronizing everything, uh, we can delete safely the mirror brain. The main reason of that change is because we need to move the updates Jenkins IU website from that machine in AWS to a new virtual machine in Oracle that uh, Stefan prepared a few weeks ago. The main thing is that these scripts uh, have to be part also of the new machine. So that means the new machine in Oracle will be responsible for every hour or when it's asked remotely to synchronize the change to the host USL mirrors to the get Jenkins IO mirror reference and cache. So that part will move away from AWS as well, which means in terms of bandwidth, we won't have download public bandwidth that costs us a lot, but we might have some outbound bandwidth from the trusted CI agent that generates the new plugin updates to that machine. That bandwidth wasn't existing, or at least not costing us a lot because it was cross regions, which won't be the case anymore. 
However, we were already pushing to OSUSL or to Azure. So the outbound won't change a lot. But keep in mind that this, this might create some mayhem. So I will try to be careful and ask at least someone else on each time to review it carefully. I won't try to push things too quickly there. Next task, unless you have any question. So I plan to work on that task next week, but after the LTS. Next one is Realign Repo Jenkins CI. That one, I opened the draft GEP to explain the proposal, but I wasn't able to fill with too much details. The goal was to work on it uh, during the community summit last week, which did not happen. So uh, I need some help for reviewing that uh, end of week. But uh, my plan is I've put the proposal, uh, which will be enabling authentication only on the mirrors uh, on the repo Jenkins Maven and keep, try keeping public the rest. That might have some impact. So the community and contributor must be asked uh, for advices there because we there are clearly some elements that will be impacted. Either the POM, the main build POM, or at least the way we handle documentation for developers if they need to be authenticated. The goal is to follow up the assumption that we don't cross the GFrog download limits only with the Jenkins artifact themselves. But as they told us, most probably that's the free mirror of most Maven repository for free for everyone on the internet that will cause some downloads. So the goal here will be avoid man making mandatory authentication. So we won't be overwhelmed by the amount of companies crying because now their mirror of Jenkins repository need an account and it's complicated and stuff. While in fact, we only target the developers. If you are a developer, there should be no issue for you to encode your Jenkins LDAP password on your Maven setup. So you can use the mirrors that we provide or CI Jenkins IO, of course, with the work that Hervé is doing. So that's the, the earth of the proposal. Now let's see, uh, we need advice, a uh, lot of opinion and go to a consensus on that part. So, so Damien, I'm not sure how to configure my, or can I get some coaching, not here in the meeting, but can I get some coaching on how to configure my settings on XML I certainly have credentials that I use to push. Are those same credentials then usable when I when I pull in this new world of authenticated access? Yes, the credential that you define on your home uh, M2 settings XML, they are scoped by using the repository ID. So if we have an exhaustive list that come from mostly from the POM parent on Jenkins, that define today the repo Jenkins CI slash public, which has an ID. And there is a second one for incremental. So it's like, I think Jenkins public and incremental are the IDs inside Maven setup. So once you know this ID that doesn't change often, you can set, okay, that couple of cred encrypted credential is for the repository with ID Jenkins public. That one is for whatever my company private, whatever my personal private, and then Maven links them by ID. So you can have multiple. That's the idea. So that will work if you use the correct uh, snippet. And, and so that means my CI jobs scattered on agents all over will somehow need the same or will need access to a credential that will allow them to access the, the repository as well, right? Exactly. So CI jobs, my personal ones, who's ever will need credentials to access that. Thanks, okay. Yep. So it's, it's I, I think I can see how to test that, thanks. Uh, collect data dog metrics for ephemeral virtual machines. That's your area, Stefan. Yes, and that's that's uh, uh, linked with the other one down. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, working on the, uh, the Windows part of them. I uh, managed to deal with the Azure ones with the cloud init injection for the API, API key. And now I'm working on the EC2 uh, version of it. And at the same time, I'm working on uh, improving the the checks on the uh, availability uh, 
check that we had before and to have more uh, to improve all those checks for uh, the Linux parts and for the Windows ones. Cool. Nice work, because the way Windows, it's not easy. Um, were you able to play or not with the dashboard part on Datadog, which is the I, last? I, I will, uh, I will need your help. I, I did manage one thing, but uh, I, I cannot mix uh, within the, the same dashboard. Uh, different kind of information. I I might need your help for that. Okay. So we I'm keep sorry, continue working on that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's keep continue working on this too. Mm -hmm. And finally, an issue that was open earlier today. Thanks, Mark, for handling it. So someone say they lost access for publication to the crowd to plugin. Okay, they changed their account two weeks ago. Um, yeah, most probably they okay. messed up the encryption of the password on Maven, that's the usual. Um, is there, an, except telling them to use CD, is there an, something else that we could do? I check that you, that person was uh, in the plugin maintainers in the repository permission updater, which is the case. Uh, so I'm not sure. Daniel, is there any way to check for the authentication on, rip, on the Maven repo? Since I'm admin, I could at least check for an error or something. Yes, if you check within five minutes of the error occurring, because <laughs> ah yeah, <laughs> correct. JFrog uses extremely aggressive log rotation, um, and it's also stupid log rotation because every few minutes they truncate the file to nothing. So there is basically a next to zero percent chance that you see the log messages from the two seconds before they do that. Um, I would emphasize Mark's response because I think there are ways to encrypt Maven passwords that are very different from what Artifactory does, which is why we have very detailed instructions. So I would like the reporter to confirm specifically that they followed the instructions on this page uh, and not some random other Maven encryption instructions. Yeah, I, 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 Daniel, to support what Daniel said, that's been a consistent pattern that we've repeatedly had people who needed to be reminded these state these instructions are exactly this way because they're the ones we know work. And there are lots of other places where you can read about instructions that ultimately don't work. Yeah, so recently someone also emailed the dev list saying the instructions don't work because and I was confused about a repository they set up and they said, well, I copied it from the XML file from your instruction. And my response was, well, read the last step that says ignore everything in this file except for the password, step seven. So, yeah. Okay, fair. So thanks for the knowledge sharing. Uh, I didn't realize that, but yeah, yeah. Seeing the instructions well, clear. So let's. It, it is the nature of detailed instructions like that that it's easy to make mistakes doing them, right? And yeah. so, but it, but all we can do to tell them is, look, you have to have to do exactly what the instructions say. We understand it's easy to make mistakes, but they're exact for a reason. Right. Yeah. So, and the instructions are weird. Like, download this file and ignore ninety percent of its content. That's not what would usually be on the success path of any same process. Um, but Mark, you commented there, then there was another comment and it seemed like the reporter just responded to the last comment there. I would like them to acknowledge that they have done what Mark asked. Yeah, they, uh, the reporter just responded to Damien's comment. So uh, yep. ping them, uh, I suggest you ping them and uh, ask them, to uh, confirm that they followed the instructions exactly that Mark linked. Cool, thanks for the tip. Yep. 
Here we are. Okay, so that was the last issue. Many thanks, Mark and Daniel, for the explanation. Many thanks. Checking the new the new issues or the new important thing that we could put. I saw one, two, three new issues since last meeting. Uh, one by Gavin. It's just triaging now. We see if we have to add it to the upcoming milestone or if we let it in the backlog. So there is an issue on the configuration of the infra job for stories, which seems not to handle pull requests. So that means that we should have a look. Uh, for a reminder, the configuration of this job is not infra as code. I hope we will be able to do it one day. But right now it's manual, uh, manually managed still on CI Jenkins IO. So the goal will be to look. Uh, I fear that infra being a GitHub repository operation scanning, that we might need to move stories away from that repo so we can fine tune its configuration if it doesn't map the GitHub organization scanning ones. I don't remember the pull request policy for this one, so better to check. So something to check there. Uh, is there someone volunteering? By default, it falls back to me. But if anyone is interested in trying this. Uh, so, so Damien, if you're okay with this one, I'm so what you what I heard you just say is I could test this by configuring ci.jenkins.io interactively. And I'm actually reasonably good at that. I'm happy <laughs> to do that. Uh, so how about if I take this one? Would that be okay rather than yeah. having you do it? Because it's this is not an automation one and and I'll take it on because I'm also interested in this site as part of advocacy. Okay. May I ask you uh, if Stefan or Hervé is interested just to pair for knowledge sharing? That would be a great exercise for one of them. Also a reminder to see the manipulate the Jenkins concept, such as a uh, GitHub organization scanning, which mm -hmm. uh, might have impact on stories if you have to move it. And that will show, so uh, since you are really experimented with the UI, that will help them to uh, learn on the process. And you are sure. as good at that as I'm bad at that. So I will oh. really need it. Yeah, that's, will, that, uh, great, I will happy to pair. Happy Thank to pair, you. I'll schedule some time. Um, second one is a pipeline graph view on release CI Jenkins IO. I guess everything was done before the weekly release. So once the weekly release is finished, we will check, but I think they did everything correctly and we merge. So to be checked, uh, Stefan, can I ask you to check this one since you are handling the plugin and core updates? Yes, with pleasure. And Jenkins CI account verification on Twitter. Um, I guess it's not really infrastructure there, but the advocacy uh, part of the board even. So it's about asking Twitter from that account. So they are they have the blue tick to say that's a validated account by Twitter themselves. I have no idea what are the proof that are needed. Some person are validated, some are not. That's, I'm not in these things, but we don't have access to the account. So. Um, not sure. Should we send an email so, to advocacy group? Since I'm a member of the board mm -hmm. and I'm a per permitted to post to that account, why don't you assign it to me? And I, I don't know that I'll get to it. I'm not sure we should put it in this upcoming work, but but I think it's a reasonable thing to say, yeah, we should do it eventually. And as a board member, I'm a good candidate. And since I have access to that account, I'm probably a doubly good candidate. Cool. Thanks, Mark. I think we covered all. So do you have new subject that we should work on prioritarily this week that we didn't mention? Or do you have any question, more information? Uh, for so the meeting? only the only topic for me was elections. And that's one, Damien, where I took an action item in board meeting yesterday to, to get with you since we missed doing it at DevOps World. I yep. used the excuse that Hurricane Ian disrupted us. And of course, Gavin Mogan said, how can a hurricane interrupt an online election? Yep. <laughs> and so it's, it's a, we, Damien and I didn't get together. So okay. you're okay. I assume the two of us pair up later and, and do some prep for elections. Yes, absolutely. 
Damien, you may want to uh, speak about the VPN certificate, something you spoke this morning. Uh, yes. To wrap it up, uh, we will open an issue on that milestone. We have to regenerate the CRL uh, for the VPN. It's a yearly or six months. Um, the goal is to have Stefan making it and me uh, in support. It's well documented. That's, that should be uneventful. Uh, we received the notification on a calendar that should happen in three weeks, roughly. So that's the idea. Uh, I missed them. Uh, so since we are out of time, uh, thanks for the reminder. But I will add the issue on the current milestone. I know that Stefan won't forget about it. Thanks, Stefan. You're welcome. Okay. I think we can close it up then. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye.